Welcome, Peter, to the 17th episode of Unleash the Knowledge's podcast, Everyday Extraordinary, where it's my job to push the message that we all have extraordinary capabilities within us. And I do this by having conversations with everyday extraordinary people like yourself. So very Love that. You're so right. Exactly. Very happy to be connected. You are the author, new author of Honest to Greatness. The subtitle reads, How Today's Greatest Leaders Use Brutal Honesty to Achieve Massive Success. Yes. And um, first off, just want to say thank you for being so vulnerable, tapping into a concept that's not talked about enough. Nevertheless, you use brutal honesty throughout it all to talk about your own self, because I know I'm sure we've been across a couple uh, books or authors where they speak about something, but they don't actually exemplify what they're speaking <laughs> about. And you are uh, yeah. someone who's the testament of that. So a lot of praise for that. I want to mention that before we kick it off. Thank you. If anything, it's kind of freeing. I do like keynotes now and I like share all kinds of stuff and it fits the entire purpose, you know? And what's funny is that if more people realized, Owen, oh, like the, the wisdom in that phrase, the truth shall set you free. Like it's actually so freeing to just have nothing to hide. I couldn't agree more. And, um, and, and I'm at a earlier stage than you currently, but I've already kind of picked up on that and I've dedicated a good portion of COVID lockdown to building my self-awareness and really peeling back the curtain, seeing what's Love that, going man. on and um, trying to take the right steps moving forward. So love to hear it. It's a great message. Awesome. So I will start my timer to respect your time fully and we'll hop into some questions. Sounds good. Cool. So first question I have is for those that may not know about you, can you share a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm a failed uh, Olympic hopeful figure skater who uh, trained for about 15 years and got, you know, nowhere, a couple broken bones and bumps and bruises along the way. Um, that taught me a tremendous amount about what it takes to achieve success and what difficulty actually looks like. Because, um, one, you know, I say, Owen, one should go out and, you know, you're all alone in front of 3,000 people and you fall on your ass wearing tights, like nothing else is difficult after that. Like that, that's it, right? All, it's all easier after that. Uh, got out of school in 2008, because I have great timing like that. Started a business um, because I'm a pain in the ass to work for anyone else. I always want to know why and why aren't we doing this better? And uh, why don't we do this logically and so on and so forth. So started a video production company. Uh, my business partner and I uh, immediately went tens of thousands of dollars into debt when we started that. Took the next three, four years, slowly building that up and eventually uh, built an Inc. 5000 marketing agency. Uh, we had offices across the US and in Canada, worked with startups to the Fortune 500 and even Mr. Warren Buffett himself. And uh, I was always perplexed by the lack of fundamental honesty at the C-suite level of companies of all kinds of sizes, which event, uh, eventually led me to write Honest to Greatness. Very cool. That's amazing. And then it's, it's reassuring to know that you had that entrepreneurial spirit in you from very early on. Oh, yeah. I'm from a sports background as well. So I can, um, I can, I can definitely relate with, with your experience to some degree. I haven't, you know, trained for the Olympics of any means, but, um, you well, know, well, I didn't get there. Let's be clear, but, uh, well, all the journey, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the new book is out 2020 got published during COVID honest to greatness. Can you explain how long it took you to write this book? And then also maybe a wider range, how it came from starting to write it to distribution today? Yeah, it took me four years, Owen, four years from like the, so what, what happened is I um, had a terrible crisis occur to me. I turned 30, which I don't know if this has happened to you that yet, but it was like a miserable, like hit a brick wall kind of experience for me. And, um, I figured out that I was in what I now know is out of honest alignment with who I really was and what I really wanted, my, my vision of, of, you know, who I am in the world, right? One of those things was to be an author. So, uh, you know, and I had other goals. I wanted to do a TEDx talk and keynotes and write for Forbes and Inc. and all this other stuff. I'd go back to school, get an MBA, which I did at Columbia. I had this whole big list, right? Like, th no, this is who I am uh, and went and pursued those things. And, um, where the book came out of, it actually started as a marketing book, um, not as a book about honesty. I, I didn't set out to write about, care about, you know, speak about honesty. I mean, it wasn't even on my radar. 
um, it was actually my literary agent that, you know, I had written a book about marketing, but all my frustrations over the years of seeing leaders that didn't want to follow the data. They didn't want to follow facts. They were so wrapped up in their own ego and biases that they couldn't see the truth. And so they, their businesses were drifting into oblivion. And I was like, what the hell? Like they don't teach a class about this, you know, at, at business school. Um, but I, you know, I was only looking at it as marketing. It was my agent who was like, you know, Peter, uh, this isn't a book about marketing. It's a book about honesty. And I was like, well, clearly I signed with the only agent who can't read because there's nothing to do with that. And I don't know what you're talking about. And of course he was right. And, and I was wrong. Um, as, as is often the case in my life, you can ask my wife, she'll corroborate that. Um, so yeah, sorry. What'd you ask? I got off topic there. No, well, you answered it four years and yeah, it took, right. Took four years. And, um, for anyone who wants to write a book, I, you know, I actually put together a free Facebook group. It's called write and launch a book. If you Google me or, uh, on Facebook, you'll find it. And I did that because it took, it was such a learning curve. I mean, writing a book is, is like starting up a new business. And I didn't know about getting an agent, getting a publisher, like I had to learn every step of the way, you know, what, what makes a good book outline? How do you put together a marketing plan and press plan and get endorsements from, you know, Barbara Corcoran and everything else. So I actually did a whole Facebook group on that. You can go look it up for free, teaching people how to do it because it's an exhausting and soul searching process. I bet. And I'm, uh, I'm inching towards that process, you know, many ideas. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I actually found the Facebook group and I've actually tried to join it or I'm in the waiting. I'm in a purgatory right now. So we'll wait. For mine? Get ex- yes. Okay, good. Make sure you let, let me know if you don't get in. I'll, I'll let you yeah, in. I will. So if someone just comes across the book, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, your page, my page, what's the number one takeaway you can encompass the book to that someone's going to gain? Yeah. I mean, look, uh, I was very fortunate. The book premiered and as, as the number one new release on Amazon in a couple different categories. One of them was business ethics. Now, listen, I, I think people should be ethical and moral and all that crap, but this is not an ethics book. Like this is not about like how to be a better person. This is about how do you achieve outcomes in your life and business? And what I found, Owen, through all the research I've done and case studies from Quicken Loans and the Ritz Carlton and Domino's Pizza and, and a an 11 year old Girl Scout that sold 30,000 boxes of cookies and just all these great stories that actually leaders in the 21st century can use honesty like, like a business strategy, like a weapon to achieve results. So this is really about the weaponization of honesty and, it, and it's not just honesty, it, it's strategic, brutal honesty. And I want you know both leaders and organizations to understand that in a world where everyone is recording you, right? I mean, we're recording this right now. Like the truth comes out and, and we have that phrase in the English language, but look on the TV. I mean, it's like a scandal after scandal, right? And people say to me like, Peter, what do you mean? Honesty is more effective now than ever. Look at all these scandals. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. 50 years ago, you wouldn't have known, right? Now we do. And in that environment, we can still actually use honesty as a strategy to achieve success, to achieve alignment in our personal lives, and to achieve literal profitability and industry dominating results. I couldn't agree more. And to dive into more honesty, to learn more about yourself, we spoke about prior to the questions, self-awareness. Um, mm. Cause you can't really be honest unless you could be delusional in your own head, think you're being honest, but really you might not be at least on a personal standpoint. So do you have any next steps that you could provide someone who, you know, I know it's not exactly book related, but maybe during your 30 year old crisis or they're coming out of college during COVID and they have no idea what's going on. Where could they find some direction? Totally. Well, you raise an excellent point. I get some people who are like, well, Peter, I mean, I don't need this. I am honest. As soon as somebody tells me they're honest, Owen, I know that they're not. Just like if someone were to tell me that they're self-aware, that's a clue that they're probably the least self-aware person in the room. Right. It doesn't work like that. You know, to, and, you know, people get my friends get mad at me because I come on these and I'm like, I'm not a terribly honest person. Like everything I say, you should be questioning. And that's to to your point. You know, what can people do? Start questioning. Right. Question everything. And there's two questions, actually, that, that I want everyone to adopt and literally has the power to change your habits, beliefs and actions. And it's uh, is that true? And how do I know? How can I test that? And this applies whether it's a headline on the news or your great aunt Betty's Facebook post or a thought you have in your head, an assumption or a belief that you have. Do not take those for granted. 
stop and ask, like, is that actually true? And how do I know it's true? Because if I can't find empirical evidence, I might be building a life on a foundation of crap that was not even true to begin with. And it seems so obvious, Owen, but I would, I would venture to guess that over 95% of the population is just sort of drifting along, lemmings, right? Not even stopping to think critically and ask those kind of questions to get at what's actually true, not what we believe, not what our ego says, not what our mother wanted for us, but what's actually real and honest. Absolutely. And I, and I think probably during this time stuck at home has probably been the best chance to do something like that because we're all, whether you're in the rat race, whether you're a business owner, whatever you may be, you're running around, millions of things are coming up, notifications left and right. Everything's, you know, bidding for your attention. But um, it seems like it is those inner talks, questioning yourself. And I know you talk a little bit in the group, or sorry, in the book that maybe ask your friends, those close to you, what they might say. Now that I thought can go two ways because you might not have the most self-aware people around you. But True. obviously, if you have a good inner circle, like it's, you showed that you, um, once you went through that crisis, you refined your inner circle and it helped you write this book and it helped you do many other things. So that's something I'd encourage the audience as well. Um, and, and now back to, or, or continuing this, because my demographic is heavily in the 20 to 30 year old demographic coming out of college, trying to get that first step, building that career, or even hopping into entrepreneurship. Do you have some hindsight advice or tips that you can give an individual during that age uh, bracket that's, you know, even pre-COVID, just coming out of college and having tons of student loans maybe and, and trying to figure out what's going on? Yeah, happy to. Um, I would say, don't be an idiot and try to do things alone. I mean, it really is the height of idiocy, right? And I think back to, you know, 22 when I started my company to 26, it took me those, what, four years to figure out like, what's the right business model? It cost us a lot of time and money. What's the product market fit? Who are the customers? What's the sales pitch? I could have shortcut all of that if at 22, instead of starting my company, I had just gone out to every smart, successful person person I could find, get mentors, talk to lawyers and accountants and investment advisors and like all sorts of smart people that anyone has access to. They can go find them on LinkedIn, ask mom and dad, ask uncle and whatever, you know, find the smartest people you can get and talk to them. Try to unearth what problems they have. Ask them to mentor you. People who have achieved any sort of success I've found are over, overwhelmingly uh, willing to help. And what's interesting is I find so few young people ask. Um, and, and now, so I'm, I'm, you know, I've started multiple businesses. I'm about to start another one. All I'm doing is reaching out to folks and talking to people. Like, I think that is a skill, a soft skill that is like gone by the wayside. And it's sad because people are what drive this. You know, I have this quote that entrepreneurship is 10% business, 100% people, and 1,000% about the self. Right. And so if we can understand that, that it's about people and the self, it's the business stuff that all the things people obsess over. Oh, how do I do a sales funnel? How do I do it? all the wrong questions, mm -hmm. all the wrong questions all the time, Owen? That's good advice. I really appreciate that. I think, you know, a lot of people will be able to attack that. And personally, social media has been an absolute gateway for myself, for people my age, even for people, you know, in the in whatever, whatever age you are, you know, you can contact people globally at the click of a button. Yeah. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, I do have a question about how you decided to go to Columbia and get your MBA kind of later in your life. Now I have a master's degree. I did it right after college. I kind of just had the momentum going and, and a position opened up where I could get a scholarship. I'm also a huge advocate for self-education through books and how you could probably learn that MBA through most of these books. What's sure. your take on this? Is this, are MBAs valuable today? Is it something you wanted because you wanted to tag to your name or you actually wanted the knowledge? I'd love to hear any of your thoughts on it. Yeah, well, you know, to your point, I had built a seven figure company before I went back to school. Um, there were a couple of reasons why. One, I, didn't, I don't know what I don't know. And I'm obsessed with that. And that, by the way, is one of the mantras every successful leader in my book has. They just love those three little words, I don't know. And I never wanted to be in a position, Owen, in the rest of my life. I mean, I'm a young guy, right? I'm 34. So for the rest of my life, I will have this MBA. I figured at some point it will pay off. 
Right. And um, boy, was I right. I mean, it's, I, I was running a you know, multi-million dollar company. It's amazing how few things I didn't know. Basics of corporate finance, equity markets, how debt works, how, you know, all, all of these like obvious things that we think we know and we really don't know, at least I didn't. Um, so I learned a tremendous amount. In addition, you know, people talk about the network, right? I met some extraordinary people doing amazing things and I learned from them, right? So all of that, you know, I'm a big, one of my best, like biggest core values is the idea of enlightenment, right? Like I always want to know more. I always want to gain more wisdom. I want to experience it all. I want to be able to say that I did it, right? So for me, that all of those reasons made it a no brainer. For someone else, they, it wouldn't make any sense to them. They'd be like, Peter, you already had the, the, the company. Why would you do that? You know, so I think it's such a personal decision. And I think there are so many other th facets to any experience, whether we're talking about an MBA or traveling the world or whatever, you, there's no way to account for all the tiny things that happen in the days, weeks, months you spend having an experience, right? And all those things add up and make you, know, you who you are, me who I am. So you know, I don't like when people just blanket say like, well, that's you know, $100,000, $200,000 investment. That's not going to pay off. It, it's not as simple as that. You know, life isn't as simple. It depends on what your core values are, where you're trying to go, and how those experiences fit into who you really are. That's the whole idea of being honest, you know, with yourself at that level. Yeah, I really like that what you just said about um, most people see the dollar amount when they think of higher education. And yes, okay, it's an investment monetarily or, or you know, in economic terms, but you're gaining experience, you're gaining relationships, you're gaining, you know, just being in that right place at the right time, I'm sure a lot will happen that's going to be beneficial mm -hmm. for you. So I would right. encourage people to look past the money amount and see what else they could get. So great. So we're um, we're wrapping up a little bit. I have three quick questions I'd love to ask you. You're obviously the new author of Honest to Greatness. You are, from what I'm understanding, a lifelong learner. You're always looking to see what else is going on and what's new. Totally. Is there a book or a few books that you find yourself either rereading or gifting to others? I think um, The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Just fabulous. Should be required reading. Do you have it? Yeah. Should be required reading for every entrepreneur. Yeah. Awesome. I like that. And, uh, and another question is, and we might have touched upon this a little bit, but is there a personal mantra that you run by yourself on a daily basis or some sort of phrase that kind of picks you up when things start going left? Yeah. I mean, they've changed changed over the years, certainly, but I've always had, I've always been of the mind that I can do that. Yeah. You know, it's like when I see somebody do whatever, I mean, I've said it so many times, like, you know, about the Ivy League, right? I can do that. About writing a book, I can do that. Starting a business, I can do that. Doing keynotes in front of thousands of people, I can do that. I just, you know, have to, I've done a good job, I think, of reminding myself that there's no reason why I can't do any of that. Um, except a reason I would make up like fear, right? I mean, that, and that's, that's not real. Fear is not honest. It's a, it's made up. We're making it up as we go. Right. So I've tried to be wise uh, to avoiding those kinds of things. Nice. I have a poster up here that you can't see because of all the books, but it's a Muhammad Ali quote. And it says competition has no, or confidence has no competition and totally. confidence might have a negative connotation. So I kind of substitute it with self-belief But you talk about mm. in the book limited beliefs how it can just you know deteriorate somebody or turn them oh they crush people and it right. it's just it's not real you know right. it's crazy Absolutely. so crush those and, and chase your dreams because it's it's true and it, it might be hard at, at one point but the reward's always going to pay off and last question is what is your definition of extraordinary hmm um i think when I think of extraordinary, I think of something very personal to each person. You know, each person has an idea of what ordinary looks like, right? They have an idea of average and, and that's different, right? Average for Bill Gates is different than average for you, right? And I think when we move from ordinary to extraordinary, it just takes deviating from that average line. And what I want people to, to do is I want them to be deathly afraid of that average line. I want them to be deathly afraid of mediocrity. And then to realize, okay, what are all the ways I can be, I can move from that ordinary line to extraordinary. And just doing one of those things, a little thing, a small thing, you know, studying that one extra hour, starting that little side hustle, 
all of those things actually, it's just like money, it compounds over time. And so the more we can just tick up off that line, the more over, over the years, that stuff adds up and it can add up huge, not only in your personal experience and happiness and fulfillment, but also literally to your bottom line. For sure. That's amazing advice. I always say something along the lines of that, that small actionable steps each day turn into massive results. It's I've seen it they through do. my own life. I'm sure obviously you have. And um, yeah. whether, whether it's reading 10 pages a day or starting that side hustle, you know, it always done consistently, it's going to turn into something big. But um, Peter, I'm so thankful for this. Thank you for coming on the show. Your book just came out, Honest to Greatness. It's been on my page. I'll keep posting it. Yes, the uh, yellow cover is very appealing. It catches the eye. Thank and you, sir. I will also um, send people towards your honesty quiz too, which is something I Please. recently discovered. So that seems like a next step to build your self-awareness. Totally. It's completely free. 21 questions. It'll take you a couple minutes and it gets you into the content, tells you what honesty type you are. And, uh, and then you get onto my uh, Monday match, which will help keep you honest because we all need that. Absolutely. Accountability is key. Is there anywhere I could send people to learn more about you? Sure. Uh, come have an honest conversation at honest to greatness.com. It's honest to greatness.com. Very cool. Well, thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. And I'll, I'll start uh, being more mindful about being honest and keep pushing your book out, but I appreciate your time. Sounds good. Thanks for being honest, buddy. Mm -hmm.